everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Amber Rose, also known as The Religious Hippie. You can basically follow me on any social media platform, or you can check out my official website at thereligioushippie.com. So today we are discussing consistency in prayer, why it's important, how to stay consistent in prayer, all that fun stuff. So without further ado, let's get into the video. First of all, let's talk about why consistency in prayer is so important. Prayer is one of those ways that we can form a relationship with God. We consciously take the time to cultivate the relationship with God and to give Him the best and worst parts of our day. Prayer is also a great stress relief and a wonderful reminder that it is all in God's hands. Of course, we can pray for specific petitions and things like that, but personally for me, it's great to know that not all of that weight is on my shoulders and that I can just offer it up to God and He is in control. Basically, to sum it up, prayer is a wonderful way to grow in our faith life and our relationship with God. One of my favorite quotes from the Bible is, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. And that's 1 Thessalonians uh, 5, 16 through 18. So by staying consistent in prayer, we are staying consistent in our relationship with God. Therefore, we get to know God so much better and he gets to know us so much better, even though he already knows everything about us, but you get what I mean. It's reciprocated instead of just God knowing everything about us. We get to know a lot of stuff about God and who he is, and I honestly love that. It's it's so wonderful getting to know our Heavenly Father. I also wanna say that staying consistent in prayer is so important because that's what the saints did. They always say the difference between a saint and a sinner, well, we're all sinners, but you guys know what I mean, is that saints kept trying. No matter the issue, no matter what they were facing, they just kept turning to God. They kept praying. No matter how they felt, no matter what their emotions were like, they still leaned on God and they continued to trust in Him and they continued to stay consistent in their prayer life. Through staying consistent in our prayer life, we can truly battle the evils of this world, we can truly form a better relationship with God, and we can better understand our faith, how to get to heaven, all that stuff. So how do we stay consistent in our prayer lives? The first step that I would like to touch on is giving God the first moments of your day. I know not everybody here is a morning person, not everyone's like, oh, I, can wake, I can't wake up like an hour early because like I need my extra sleep and stuff. Well, you could go to bed earlier. You know, I think a lot of people don't see God as a priority. And so they think, oh, I'll fit God into my schedule where I think he fits. In reality, it should be God is in our schedule 24 seven. He's never just like a blocked out piece of time. Of course, it helps to block out time for, you know, prayer. But in reality, like he should be the main part of our day. It should be like a circle. It's not like a tier, you know, where God is the top of the tier and then everything else comes afterwards because then those things are far from God. In reality, it's more of like, think of like a target. God is in the center and then everything else is around him and branches out. So I always love that analogy and I think everything should revolve around God. We should always be thinking about it, praying without ceasing. And one of the best ways to do that is to always keep God at the forefront of our minds. So saying grace before meals, if you stub your toe, offer it up. All those little things are so important. But I digress. Okay, giving God the first moments of our day. The first moments of our day are so crucial when it comes to productivity. It's just kind of how our brains are wired. If you wake up earlier, you feel more motivated to do things that are productive if you make your bed, if you journal in the morning, if you have that set routine. So let your first thoughts be about God. Get on your knees, pray before you ever touch your phone, before you get your coffee. I'm not saying like you have to sit down and do an hour of prayer right out of bed, but I am saying do like a Thanksgiving prayer, like thank you God for waking me up, good morning, do your morning offering. It literally takes only like 15 seconds to say it. Um, and then get up, go get your coffee, come back and start doing your spiritual reading. And then something that has personally helped me is at night, 30 minutes before you go to bed, put your phone down, take out your Bible, do some spiritual reading, just anything that can help you prepare you to get ready for bed. So God should be the first thing that we think of when we wake up and the last thing we think of when we go to bed. Personally, for me, I find the best way to do this is through the examination of conscience. Doing this exam, doing a thorough examination of conscience before bedtime 
it just prepares us for the next day. We can look back on this day, we can see what we, you know, were really, really good in, what we grew in virtue-wise and all of that stuff, and then we can see what we need to work on. What are some things that we could have done better? Were we uncharitable in certain areas? Could we have been nicer to that person who was honking at us? All the fun stuff, right? So it's great to be able to examine your conscience so then the next day you can be prepared for what to look for. Also, it prepares you for confession. We should always be doing an examination of conscience before confession. And as always, I'm linking my favorite Favorite examination of conscience below the Bulldog Catholic. It's a PDF just so you guys know so it'll instantly just like download um, but I absolutely love this examination of conscience. It walks you through what to expect during confession and then it's a very thorough examination of conscience. It goes through all of the commandments, goes through all the precepts of the church, it's just wonderful. So I highly suggest the Bulldog Catholic Examination of Conscience. I also want to remind people here that it takes about a month for any type of what's the word, a uh, habit to be solidified. So if you're falling off every now and then, you're frustrated with yourself because you touch your phone before you pray, just correct yourself. Put your phone down. Don't give in to the, oh, well, I already touched my phone, so I might as well scroll through Instagram. I've done that. I've been there. I see you. Don't do it. I highly suggest making a challenge out of this by marking days on your calendar which you stay consistent and days that you don't. And see on those days that you don't stay consistent what changed. Was it a last minute plan? Were you just not feeling motivated to pray? What was it and how can you change that? The second thing you can start doing to be consistent in prayer is to set aside a specific time during the day to pray. Now the morning offering I personally do during the morning because Honestly, sometimes my mornings are really rushed, but that is the one prayer that I always get in. If I can't sit down for an hour and read my Bible and do my Bible study and pray my rosary or my Divine Mercy Chaplet, I will do my best to do my morning offering every single day. Sometimes I forget, so I do it in the car, but it still counts because I'm not giving up. I'm still trying and trying is what counts. So set a time aside for prayer every single day. You can set a timer or you can set um, aside a specific time like time block or you can set a timer. Like I used to have a friend where every single night at 7 p.m. no matter where she was or what she would do her alarm would go off and she would pray in our father. No matter who she was with or anything. There was multiple times where we were all hanging out and it was 7 p.m. and her alarm went off. She's like okay I'm gonna pray and she she would have all of us pray with her. Now at that time I wasn't practicing my faith but it really stuck with me how even though she was around people that she didn't always feel so comfortable with sharing her faith and things like that, she was brave enough to say in Our Father and have us invited in to join her. Um, and I, I was always just like, wow, that's kind of weird. But then as I came back into my faith, I'm like, wow, that's so cool, like how she was so strong in that. So little things like that can really impact people, you know? They really do. Personally, for me, I love praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 p.m. every single day. 3 p.m. is the hour of Divine Mercy, as Jesus told St. Faustina. I usually like to pray with Drew Mariani on Relevant Radio because he prays it at 3 p.m. Central Time. However, because my schedule is ever-changing as a babysitter, usually I am babysitting between 3 and 4 when usually Drew Mariani is on and the Divine Mercy Chaplet is being said. So the girls that I babysit have become very accustomed to me pulling out my Divine Mercy Chaplet and my little alarm going off at 3 p.m. and me praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet and turning on Drew Mariani. Now naturally they're not all Catholic that I babysit so they don't really understand it but I'm hoping when they grow up and they get older they understand the importance of prayer and that that memory will stick with them of me praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day at 3 p.m. Now the Divine Mercy Chaplet, it literally only takes like 10 minutes to say, if that. Um, and I personally really love it because it's helped me so much coming back into my faith. But, you know, I'm just saying, choose a time every single day and set that time aside for prayer, no matter what. If your friends want to hang out, tell them, okay, but at this time I have this prayer or at this time I have that prayer. If we truly set God as a priority and we truly respect and want his friendship, his love and everything that he has to offer us, we will give him the time, you know? I mean, how many times do we just sit there scrolling through our phones on social media? And I know I always hated that term. It's like, you have time to scroll, you have time to pray. And I'm just like, yeah, but I don't want to. Well, in reality, it's not really about what we feel and what we want. A relationship does not work 
if some days you feel like it and some days you don't. You always are committed to that person and you are willing to make it work no matter the way you feel because love is a choice. So the same way, we have to choose to love God. It is our free will choice to love God and we need to make that choice with our actions every day. The next thing I wanna say is to ask for help. We have a heavenly family for a reason. If you are struggling, to stay consistent in prayer, ask them for help. It's really a wonderful gift to have so many amazing saints and heavenly family people to just be there for us and offer us that support because they have been where we are. They have been in our shoes and it's so wonderful to just be able to connect with them that way, you know? One of my personal favorite saints to ask for his intercession is Saint Jude. Yes, technically he is the patron saint of lost causes. I know that, but he's also a wonderful example of the power of hope and prayer. You can also, of course, ask Jesus during adoration or whatever during your prayer time, say, God, I am really trying to stay consistent in prayer. Please give me the graces to be able to stay consistent in these prayers. And if I fall off, please give me the grace to be able to hop back on the track again. God will not let your prayers go unanswered, but again, we need to also put the work in. It can't just all be on God. We also need to show that we want this. He's not a fairy godmother. He's not just gonna like boop boop. Suddenly you're just gonna be completely consistent in prayer. It takes work on our end, but God will give us that grace because he wants that relationship with you. The next thing I'm gonna say is to start a prayer journal. People are so good at keeping journals and I'm just like, why not keep a prayer journal too? Like that's awesome. And plus with a prayer journal, it equals those prayers. So it's like, kill two birds with one stone, you know what I mean? I already made a previous video about prayer journaling, how to start a prayer journal. I will link that below for you guys in the description if you are interested in that. But prayer journaling helps us stay consistent in prayer because it keeps a record of our conversations with God. It tells us what prayers we have prayed, how God has answered those prayers, especially in the ways that we don't expect him to answer those prayers. Another thing you can do is you can make a prayer list. I have gone to a lot of Catholic family homes and they all have a wonderful prayer list. Usually it's on a chalkboard or a dry erase board, but every single week they have some a new list of things to pray for, and I just think that's so wonderful. I personally have been meaning to implement this into my life, though I haven't really had too many issues staying consistent with prayer recently, but having a list of prayer intentions as a reminder to pray is really, really helpful, especially when you're like, okay, this person asked me for a prayer request, this person's relying on me, to pray for them um, and I want to be able to lift them up in prayer like it's just a great reminder that prayer is very powerful and we can use prayer to help other people in situations I mean Roe v Wade was overturned what a blessing and no doubt that was due to the amazing people who kept praying and never gave up all the rosaries the divine mercy chaplets the prayers it's just wonderful to see so prayer is powerful prayer works miracles when I was really struggling with staying consistent in prayer and sometimes I still do I'm not perfect okay I sometimes still do struggle with it if I hit a dry season but the main thing that really helped me was spiritual reading and specifically the Bible in a Year podcast by Father Mike Schmitz was wonderful. I know he's coming out with a new one, The Catechism in a Year, which I am so excited for. I absolutely love Father Mike Schmitz. I think he's the bomb.com. His podcast has helped me so much study the Bible, understand the context behind it, and I think everybody should do it at least once so they can say that, oh look, I read the Bible and I actually understand the context behind it. I know some people that are doing it like every single year, like it's now a annual thing for them where they just wanna continue doing it and really learn as much as they can from the Bible and from, from God and from Father Mike Schmitz, and I think that's beautiful. I'm still, I'm still getting there. I'm a little slow, but I'm taking my time, and I think taking your time is more important than trying to finish a race, so to speak. So I really wanna take my time and understand it, and I just really love the Bible in a Year podcast. You can also just pick out any kind of spiritual reading. You know, I've been reading some of Sadie Robertson's books. Now, Sadie Robertson is not Catholic, but nothing in her books go against Catholicism, and I actually really love the way that she writes. It's very personable. It's, it's very unique to uh, Sadie and who she is as a person and the people she's trying to communicate to, and I just think it's really helpful um, to kind of get that you know, personal experience from a book. So I've really been loving her books, but some other books are like saint books, like the story of a soul. You could do a consecration, like the consecration of St. Joseph or the 33 days to morning glory or the 33 days to merciful love. Or all of those are so wonderful. So spiritual reading is really important to help us grow in our faith and understand it. And we will always be learning about our faith. With our lifetime, 
there's no way we could possibly exhaust the amount of information that there is on Catholicism. So never stop learning. Never stop learning. Yeah, said that right. Honestly, in reality, it is so easy for us to fit prayer into our everyday lives, but we're always making excuses. So we need to stop that and start making God a priority. So just to recap, in the morning, before you get your morning coffee, before you touch your phone, say the morning offering. At night, put your phone down 30 minutes before you go to bed. Do some spiritual reading, do some Thanksgiving prayers and an examination of conscience. So then the next day, you're prepared to spiritually face whatever issues you might have and you are prepared to kind of just address those problems because if you didn't address them properly the day before, God is giving you that second chance to correct those behaviors the next day. Do 15 minutes of spiritual prayer or spiritual reading. It really does not take that long and 15 minutes goes by like that, especially if you're in a really good book or a really good podcast. And I'm pretty sure the Bible in a Year podcast, like it's only like 10 minutes long. It's really, and most of it's just like the introduction. It's not long at all. And the last recap is keep trying. If you fall off the bandwagon, hop back on and ask God for those graces to be able to do that. I would love to hear what your guys' favorite prayers are in the comments below, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye guys!